Hey guys, so this video is going to be a little bit different. It's kind of like a 4K live video, but it's not actually live. Um, anyway, Sony announced the A6400 last week. Interesting announcement, uh, a lot of thoughts of my own, but I figured in this video what I wanted to do was go through kind of a Q&A with questions from you guys. So I have, I think, five or six pages of questions. I'm just going to go through one by one read them and then answer them. Actually, before I jump into the questions, I guess it would probably be a good idea to go over kind of what the announcement entailed. For those of you who may have not been paying attention or missed it, really you can summarize it by naming five points. The first thing that the new A6400 has is continuous eye autofocus which is awesome for portraits. It's something that even Sony's higher end cameras like the a7 III doesn't even have. Then it has um, object tracking. So again, the autofocus, the two main areas of improvement are related to autofocus on this new camera. So it has a really good object focusing system. So excited to check that out and see what that's all about. Third thing is the a6400 does have a flip out screen which is why all of the vloggers out there are going nuts. The fourth thing, Sony says the color science is improved, so you're gonna get more natural skin tones with photos. And in video, not only do you get better skin tones and colors, but you also get HLG, which is another color grading, um, kind of like S-Log, but better. Um, last thing that I'll mention is that there is no longer a recording limit on the A6400, so you no longer have to shoot 30 minutes at a time. You can shoot unlimited, and according to those who have gotten their hands on the pre-production versions of these cameras, apparently the battery life is better, and it does not overheat um, anywhere near as quickly as the A6000, A6500, A6300, etc. Um, so that is pretty much it, the gist of the overview. I know that many people were disappointed, many people were excited, uh, but let's jump into the questions. Let's start with the first one, which is, I guess, not really a question. Surprised Sony didn't invite you to the A6400 event. Yes, I am surprised as well. What's ironic is the same YouTubers who were yelling APS-C is dead were invited to the event and now they're saying that it's the best thing on the planet. Um, maybe next time, Sony. Next question. Hey, I have a question. I'm pre-ordering the new A6400. I like the spec, but there is no IBIS in body image stabilization. I am thinking of buying the Sigma 56, but it has no optical stabilization as well. Do you think I should buy the Sigma or not? please advise. That is a very good question. If you guys have been watching this channel for any length of time, you probably know that I do think that the Sigma lenses for the Sony E-mount are the best available. So in particular, the Sigma 16, Sigma 30, um, and Sigma 56 millimeter, all f1.4. I think those are the three best lenses that you can get for this APS-C line of cameras. And all three of those lenses do not have any stabilization. So how much of a factor is that? I'd say for photos, it's not a huge deal. In fact, when I reviewed those three lenses side by side, I did it all on my A6000. All the photos that I took were on my A6000, so no stabilization in the body. And there was never a moment when I was shooting with that camera and any one of those three lenses where I thought, man, I wish my camera had stabilization. Again, I was not taking video on that trip that I took those lenses on, but for photos, I didn't really miss stabilization. That being said, if you are shooting video, I do think it is important to have some sort of stabilization if you're moving around. By the same token, I don't think in-body stabilization or Sony's IBIS is that great. Um, if I'm truly honest, you really do need a gimbal to get the best results. And if you're using a gimbal, it doesn't matter if you throw the A6500 or the A6400 or the A6000 on it, it's all going to look very nice and smooth. So yes, it is a disappointment that the new A6400 does not have in-body image stabilization, um, but I don't think that that should discourage you from buying excellent lenses from Sigma. And let me say this right here. If the new A6400 did include IBIS, then it would be better than the A6500, and there would be no reason for anyone to go out and buy an A6500. So I think that Sony is smart in the sense that they are marketing it as a stepping point. It's below the A6500 in the numbering scheme. It's entry level, but in reality, it's better 
in my opinion, in every single way as it compares to the A6500, except for that IBIS. So I'm thinking that there are going to be a lot of people who have A6500s who will end up upgrading or downgrading to an A6400 because the features that are included on that camera are pretty impressive. All right, next question. Sony A6400 or Panasonic Lumix G9? Um, I don't know. I do not follow Panasonic very closely at all. I, in fact, I don't even know what the G9 is. I'm assuming it's a small kind of micro four thirds or APS-C camera. The problem with Panasonic uh, has been the same issue that Panasonic has had for the last like three or four years, and that is autofocus. The cameras are amazing. They have great features. Color profiles are excellent. They're nice and sharp. The lens selection is decent. The problem with Panasonic has always been autofocus. Um, I cannot count the number of times that someone on YouTube, a popular YouTuber has gone, I'm switching to a GH5, did it for a month, couple of months, and now they're switching back to an A6500 because of the autofocus performance. That is why I've personally stuck with Sony APS-C. Um, I think that the autofocus is unparalleled. Um, no other camera manufacturer does autofocus as well as Sony does. And this new A6400 takes it a step above, pretty exciting. Next question, I'd like more info on the new app and photo transfer slash upload options for the A6400. Uh, me too. So apparently they are phasing out the Play Memories app and replacing it with a new app that should allow you to transfer video, which is really awesome, um, directly to your cell phone, then you can upload it. So I'm excited to check that out. Obviously that feature is going to be rolling out to all camera models, A6000, I'm assuming, and up. A5100 will probably get it as well. Next question, which benefit slash cost is better, A6000 or A6400? So I guess the real question is which camera gives you better bang for your buck? I still do think the A6000 is the better camera for the price point. I mean, you really can't beat getting a camera like an A6000 for $400, $450. It's, it's really tough to beat. So A6400 is coming in at $900, um, so it's twice the price, if not a little bit more. And for photos, if you were to take A6000, A6400, give them the same lens, go out and shoot photographs, I guarantee you that the two images you will get will be almost identical. Next question, is the Sony a6400 the same size of the a6500 or the size of the Sony a5100? Uh, the answer to that is it's the same size as the a6500. I think it has the same grip, same battery. Next question, a7 III or the new a6400? That's an interesting one. Um, if you were given the option of either one, I'm assuming that most of you would probably choose the a7 III. That's the one I would choose. It's a full frame camera. Um, you can't beat the sensor on the a7 III. That is what I think is my biggest disappointment with the a6400 is Sony releases a new camera, but the sensor is honestly the exact same thing that they've had for years and years and years now. So. I was anticipating a new improved APS-C sensor, something that was an A7 III but scaled down, and that's not what the announcement was about. So um, when choosing between those two cameras, even though the A6400 may have some better eye autofocus tracking features, I still think the A7 III is going to be the better overall camera. Next question, how many C buttons are on the new A6400 and memory setups possible? Uh, so there are three on the A6500, two on the A6400. They did that on purpose because they probably didn't want to step on the sales of the Sony A6500. Next question, so will we see a A6700 or a totally new A7000 in the near future? That is the question of the year. I wish I could answer that one. The disappointing aspect of Sony announcing a new camera is that because they've just announced something new, they can, in theory, take their time and release something like the A6600 or A6700 maybe a year from now. Um, maybe we won't see it until 2020. Um, it would be exciting if they released it this year, but who knows? So I know that it's coming. I know that they will inevitably release something that is a follow-up to the A6500, something that's a step above that, um, but who knows when that will happen. A6400, do you think Sony priced it right at $898, basically $900 um, for the body only? 
or do you think not having image stabilization will hurt its sales? So I do think that the pricing is right now. The A6500 is sitting right around $1,200 right now. So it's $300 more. And if you buy an A6400 at $900, you're getting a camera that is better than the A6500. Again, I've said that, in my opinion, it's better than the A6500, except for not having stabilization built into the camera body. I don't think that Sony needs to carry all of these camera lines. I mean, at some point you'd think that they're gonna chop off the A5100 or the A6000 and just kind of transition into only selling A6400, a6600, whatever it is, the, the new models. But Sony seems to like keeping the old models around for five years or more and continuing to sell them. So um, I don't know about that marketing strategy. Next question, not about the A6400, but what's your take on the A7000? And what is your realistic wish list for it, assuming it's something that you're looking forward to? Uh, your assumption is correct. Yes, I am looking forward to the replacement for the A6500. If I had three things on my wish list, number one would be an improved sensor. So something like the A7 III, but scaled down for APS-C. That would be amazing. Number two would be uh, the new battery. So instead of the tiny little MP50 batteries, maybe the bigger battery from the A7 III would be awesome. And number three would be 4K60. That would be amazing. So that's just my personal wish list. You guys have another wish list? Comment down below. Next question: um, Can you please do a comparison on the new A6400 and A6500? Yes, I'll do it. Um, by the way, I should have mentioned I already pre-ordered the A6400. Um, if you guys are interested in pre-ordering it, I'll have a link down below. Um, I'm excited about it. I really am at the end of the day. It's, I think it's going to be a great camera. I think it's going to sell well. Um, so yes, once I get my hands on it, I will do a comparison. Next question. A6400 dot 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 a joke dot 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 Sony should make more APS-C good lenses and something like the Fujifilm X-T3. I guess that's not really a question, but I'm going to address it. I don't think the A6400 is a joke. I don't think it's the best thing in the world, but I don't think it's the worst either. I do agree that Sony should make more APS-C lenses, more good ones, um, something like a fast walk around. Again, 16 to 50 F2. I mean, how long do we have to wait for that? And as far as Sony making something like the Fujifilm X-T3, the X-T3 is like a $2,200 camera with an APS-C sensor. If Sony came out with something like that for $2,300, everyone would be screaming at the top of their lungs because it would be way too expensive, but interesting idea, I suppose. Let's move on. Next question, sad that the A6400 does not have IBIS. What I have recognized sadly is that in real life, the Sigma 1.4 lenses are pretty useless without any stabilization and bad focusing. I don't really agree with that. I guess it's not really a question either. Um, take a look at my Trifecta Trio Sigma review all of those sample images that I took were done on my A6000 without any stabilization. I don't have the most steady hands in the world, but the lenses work perfectly fine without IBIS. Next question, is the A6400 better than an A6500? In my opinion, personally, looking at the specs, looking at um, the video and Sony release notes, I do think it is better, except for IBIS. Next question, does the new A6400 have better focus tracking or any new focus tracking options over the A6500? The answer is yes and yes, continuous eye autofocus, object tracking. Basically the new A6400, the way that it works, the camera will focus on the eyes. If the subject turns, then it will focus on the face. And then if you kind of turn away and walk around, then it will start focusing on the object. So it's kind of like a three layer focus system really unique, um, really cool, and I cannot wait for Sony to start releasing this with newer cameras. I think that it will start to become very difficult to take a blurry photograph with an autofocus like that. Um, as far as the second part of that question um, is also, could these new features be made available to the A6500 through future firmware updates? In theory, yes, but I think that the processor on the new A6400 is a lot more efficient and more advanced. So um, 
I don't think that that is going to happen. Maybe some of the new features will trickle down to the A6500, but um, I don't think that the A6500 will get a firmware 4.0 and get continuous eye autofocus. Next question, are you buying the A6400? Yes, I have it on pre-order. A6000 user, is there improvement to the low light capability of the A6400 versus older? I don't think so. The sensor is pretty much a carryover from um, the A6000 onward. Now, Sony has made slight improvements to the sensor with the A6300, um, but as far as low light performance, I think the A6000 a6300, A65, and this new A64 are probably gonna be about the same. So I would not expect any huge differences in regards to low light abilities. Next question is kind of long, but I'll summarize. Uh, basically the question is, would it benefit someone like me who owns an A6500 to switch to an A6400? And so we've talked about it through the course of this video a little bit. Um, obviously the sensor is the same. Um, the autofocus is improved. Yes, you have um, some other features such as color profiles, better color profiles in video. You have no recording limit, which is kind of a big one um, when you think about it. So if you're recording like an hour long video, doing weddings where you're gonna be filming for long periods of time, that's a big deal. Obviously the drawback is the battery. You're gonna have to have some sort of external battery pack or plug it into a power source but not having a recording limit is awesome. Also, the overheating issue seems to have improved quite a bit from what I've seen online anyway. It seems like the A6400 can record over an hour without overheating, which is uh, pretty amazing. So in all of those areas, it is an improvement. Then you have the color science improvement as well. I do think that the camera is better than the A6500, like I've said numerous times before, except for the IBIS. So you kind of have to weigh how much video are you going to be shooting? Are you shooting on a tripod, in which case IBIS doesn't matter? Or are you running around vlogging, in which case IBIS would definitely help? Um, or do you have a gimbal, in which case it doesn't matter, you stick an A6400 on a gimbal versus an A6500 on a gimbal, you'll get the same exact shot. So it's a tough choice. If you do not own an A6500 and you're considering buying an A6400 versus an A6500, um, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Just go with the A6400, $300 cheaper. I think it's a better camera. Let's move on to the next question. First time comment here, long time viewer of your video. Really great job for Sony APS-C users. The new A6400 is targeting videos, but without in-body stabilization, but with a flip screen. I would prefer in-body stabilization more, but the most unknown point should be the sensor. As such, photo users should not pick this thing up. I guess it's not really a question. If you're strictly buying a camera for photo work, you will get 95% of the performance of the A6400 with something like the A6000, which will run you $450. Um, again, there's no point in spending more if you're not gonna be using those video features. So something to be aware of. All right, next question. I wonder what you think the next series of cameras will have for us photographers. I myself would like a better low light sensor instead of more megapixels. Yeah, I mean, low light is really pretty good with the APS-C line of cameras from Sony when you compare them to other cameras on the market. Now, a lot of low light performance questions like this have to do more with the lens. So I would definitely recommend getting a good fast prime lens that will help you a lot in low light situations. But you're absolutely right. What I would like to see with the next series of cameras is for them to stick a very nice sensor like the one in the A7 III, but scaled down into a smaller body. Next question, test the A6400 overheating. I will do that, thank you. Next, uh, would it be worth it to upgrade from an A6000 to an A6400 or better to go for an A6500? Uh, so if you have an A6000 now and you're thinking about upgrading to the A64 or A65, you really have to ask yourself how much video are you shooting? Obviously you're jumping from 1080p to 4K, which is a big leap. In the end, the A6400, not only is it cheaper than the A6500, it's a little bit more future-proof. Again, the only thing that the A65 has on it is that IBIS. Next question, A6400, personally I think it was not really necessary since it's not really an improvement over the A6500. Uh, I disagree with that. I do think that there are improvements over the A6500. The autofocus, which 
I suppose the autofocus has always been great on Sony's APS-C line anyway, so Sony really didn't need to improve it, but they did. And I do think that the continuous eye autofocus, the object tracking, is going to make a big difference, especially if you're shooting sports, like if you're doing like kids' soccer games, um, any sort of sports photography, animals, wildlife, um, even portrait work. I mean, you really cannot beat the new autofocus system in the A6400. So it's a huge improvement. Color science is also updated, as I mentioned before. And then the new HLG color profile, the flip up screen, the no recording limit. I mean, you can't say those things that I just listed off are not an improvement over the A6500. They are. This question continues. There is a rumored high end A7000 on the way. That's correct. Wondering if Sony only did the A6400 to finally give us the long asked for flip screen because they might not have added a flip screen on the A7000 or the A6600 or the A6700. Um, and I agree with that. I would not be surprised if Sony released something like the Sony A6600. That's a, uh, an upgrade over the A6500 with IBIS, all the features of the A6400, but without the flip out screen. I could see them doing something like that. Next question, I have a Sony A6300. Is it worth upgrading to the A6400? That's a tough one. I do think it's worth it in some regards, only if you're using it for video. Again, if you're just taking photos with your A6300, keep it, do not upgrade. But if you are shooting a lot of video, you are going to see an improvement with the A6400. And the cool thing about Sony cameras is you could probably still sell your A6300 on the market for you know, $700, $650, 750 around that price range, at least here in the US. And then you'd spend you know, $200 on an upgrade to the A6400, which I think for the features that you're getting is well worth the money. Next question, would you upgrade from an A6000 to an A6400 or wait for the rumored high-end APS-C camera? Uh, was pretty disappointed with the announcement yesterday. So again, it depends on what you're using it for. You really have to think about how you use your camera. If you're just taking photographs, this is not a reason for you to upgrade. Uh, unless you're doing a lot of sports photography or you're doing a lot of portrait work or you're doing nature shots where you can utilize the new features of the autofocus tracking system, then yes, maybe it is time to upgrade. If you're shooting a lot of video and you want the video capabilities of the new A6400, then um, that is certainly a good reason to upgrade. You also get a flip up screen, uh, no record limit, as I mentioned before. There are a lot of reasons to upgrade. And as far as waiting for the rumored high-end camera, that could take another year, it could take another year and a half. Maybe it'll come out this year, um, in which case we'll see a whole bunch of A6400 cameras on the used market. Next question, I was planning on getting the Sony a6 III and the Sigma 30 this month. I'm on a li limited budget. Should I wait and save more money to buy the a6400 or just stay with the a6 III? Um, if you're in that situation, you're probably spending, what, $700 for the a6300 versus $900 for the a6400. Just get the a6400. All of the additional features it's well worth it. It's gonna be more future-proof. You'll be much happier with saving up $200 and getting the better camera versus cheaping out now and then regretting it later on. Is it better to have IBIS or have a flip-out screen? That's a tough one. I mean, you know, most people are very much into recording themselves. Vlogging is kind of uh, the in thing right now on YouTube. So for most people, I'd say the flip out screen is more important. That's probably why Sony included it. If Sony had included the IBIS and the flip out screen on the A6400, from a marketing standpoint, I think they would have had to price it above the A6500 and probably named it something like the A6600 because it would be better than the A6500. So again, I think that Sony is playing it correctly, even though it's not a camera with all of the features that we have all been waiting for. And I guess the exciting thing about the announcement is now we have confirmation that Sony will inevitably release a higher end APS-C camera, um, something that's an improvement over all of the previous APS-C E-mount uh, lineup cameras that they've had. So that is something to look forward to, but who knows how long that will take. Uh, last question, any new lenses from Sony? No. 
they did not announce any new lenses which is disappointing because we need new lenses. Come on, Sony, get it together. I am hoping that maybe this year, Sony will announce something like a walk around fast F2.8 constant aperture zoom lens, something that you can replace your kit lens with, or maybe they should just upgrade the kit lens, the 16 to 50. I think it's time for an upgrade. That lens has been around for what, five, six years now? So anyway, as always, I will be reviewing new lenses as they come out on this channel. That is going to be it for this Q&A. Hopefully that was helpful for some of you. For those of you who submitted questions, thank you guys so much. Hopefully I got to your question and answered it. Um, if not, if you have any comments about the questions that I answered, any additional questions, comment down below. Um, the conversation will kind of continue. I'll respond to you. Really super excited to receive the A6400 at the end of February. So once it gets here, I will be posting a review and kind of first impressions of that camera. But overall, to summarize kind of this video and my personal thoughts on it, kind of disappointed in some ways, but also excited because it means that Sony has a lot up its sleeve and the fact that Sony is constantly innovating with new features like the focus tracking and continuous eye autofocus is a really awesome thing. They have not forgotten about us APS-C Sony users, and APS-C is certainly nowhere near dead. Um, so that is it for me. Thank you guys so much. As always, thanks for all of your likes, comments, and support. Stay tuned for more, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.